have survived and truly lived traumatic moments of history. Today, you will have this unique experience and privilege of hearing firsthand from a woman who's both a witness to and is a Holocaust survivor, a victim of history. I hope that you will listen, understand, and appreciate the message of hope, courage, compassion that she will share with us today. It is my honor, it is my privilege to introduce to you our special guest, Ms. Marion Blumenthal Lazan. I'm here this afternoon to share my story with you. It is my childhood experiences during World War II in the concentration camps. I will tell you about our liberation and how we finally started our lives anew in our blessed United States of America. Mine is a story that Anne Frank might have told had she survived. And as most of you know, I think all of you know, Anne Frank was a young Jewish girl who died along with most of her family in a Nazi concentration camp during World War II. This is also a story that conveys a message of perseverance, determination, faith, and above all hope. November 9th, 1938, Kristallnacht, or Crystal Night. It was the night of broken glass when the Nazis and their many followers smashed the windows and the storefronts of Jewish-owned stores. Jewish establishments, synagogues, and Jewish books were burned and destroyed. This was the beginning of a massive pogrom against the Jews in Germany, a massive verbal and physical assault against all German Jews. In reality, this was the beginning of the Holocaust. In January of 1944, it was our turn to be shipped out. We children were actually glad for a change of environment. We were very naive and we welcomed the move. We were allowed to take one knapsack each and whatever we could stuff into it, we were permitted to take. When we approached the railroad platform and we saw the cattle cars in which we were to travel, our fears began to mount. Adults suspected and they somehow knew what was in store for us. When we arrived at our destination, concentration camp Bergen-Belsen in Germany, we were pulled and dragged out of the cattle cars and greeted by the German guards who were shouting at us and threatening us with their rifles and with the most vicious attack dogs by their sides. I was a very frightened nine-year-old and to this day I still feel a certain sense of fear whenever I see a German shepherd. Guards were always in strategically placed high guard towers and in the evening, as soon as it would turn dark, the bright searchlights from above would constantly sweep the campgrounds. 600 of us, 600 of our people were cramped into each of the crude, wooden, heatless barracks meant for 100 when originally built. There were triple-decker bunk beds with two people sharing each bunk. I remember the first time seeing a wagon filled with what I thought was firewood for the one small oven that we had in our barrack. That oven, of course, was never used. I soon realized that what was in the wagon were dead, naked bodies thrown one on top of the other. Although I've spoken to upward of one million students and adults over the past 20 years, it still has not become easy. However, I do realize the importance of sharing that period of our history with you, simply because in a few short years, we will not be here any longer to give a first-hand account. Yours is the very last generation that will hear these stories firsthand. And I therefore ask you to please, please share my story or any of the Holocaust stories that you read and hear about. Share them with your friends, share them with your relatives, and someday share them with your children. And yes, even with your grandchildren. When we're not here any longer, it is you who will have to bear witness. 
as difficult as it is, the horror of the Holocaust must be taught, must be studied, and kept alive. Only then can we guard it from ever happening again.